to the Chow St. Louis podcast. I'm Rio Vitale, president of Chow St. Louis, and today I'm interviewing Michael Anthony Vitale, the author of An Incredible Pastime. Um, Mike is the eighth child of 10 children in an Italian-American family, and uh, welcome to the podcast, Michael. Thanks, Rio. Happy to be here. Yes. So tell me, why did you write the book? Well, I was having a sleepless nights due to some memories from my past. And I thought maybe if I started writing some of these memories down, it would help eliminate these sleepless nights. And I just continued writing them and down. And next thing I knew, I was developing a book. And unbeknownst to me, the, the book has a base of cathartic writing in it, which is that helps to eliminate all these complexities in your mind by recalling them and writing them down through some medium and expressing your feelings about them. Well, did it help? Yes, uh, I, I definitely helped it. The, the sleepless nights and the memories that, that would wake me have basically gone away. So I think the book, I was able to express all these things in my book. Well, that's good. So tell me a little bit about the book. Well, the book takes place in the basically 1960s. We're a family of 13, 10 children. My father has purchased a restaurant, a famous restaurant in North St. Louis, used to be known as Phil's Barbecue. Phil's Barbecue moved to uh, Afton and he became very famous and popular there, but little people do people know that back in the 50s, he had a famous barbecue restaurant in North St. Louis, which we took over in 1961. So the book kind of covers our decade in the 60s at the restaurant, our family growing up during those years and uh, the adversities we faced during the 60s, because at that time in North St. Louis, there was the white flight from the city and the lower income area began to move in. The black population moved into the area. And it was a challenging time for my father and mother to keep the restaurant afloat. So, uh, and I worked at the restaurant during those years and had a lot of memories that, uh, I wrote about in the book. So there's a lot of times we, or at least in the past, we walk into a family restaurant and the kids are around, uh, busing tables, watching TV. Is that pretty much what it was like at your restaurant? Yes, yeah, so we did some busing, mainly waiting on customers, taking their orders, cooking the food. It was partially a takeout and partially eating them. Was it all barbecue for an Italian? No, uh, we, we had a variety of foods. We had uh, pizza, spaghetti, chicken, fish, in addition to the barbecue. Any Italian food? Um, other than pizzas and spaghetti, that was pretty much it. it. So your parents were both children of immigrants. Tell me about... Uh, what happened in their childhood to formulate their personalities? My mother was adopted and her only brother died at a very early age from a tragic accident. And her father was murdered by a Sicilian mafia also when she was at a very young age. This left her alone with her mother who was very paranoid and very dependent upon her. And so she eventually stopped going to school and took care of her mother. And also being adopted, she had no understanding of where she had come from. And she felt very alone. And I think when she got married, she decided to have this large family because it it helped to give her life more meaning, purpose, and helped her to feel like she belonged to part of something. As far as my father, he was one of 11 children, and 
at a very early age, he began working at his father's grocery store and helping him with bootlegging business. And his father was very domineering and dependent upon my father. My father basically didn't go past the fifth grade. He worked He worked for his father at, at the uh, bootlegging business and in the grocery store. And without any education, he became to have a very rough, tough personality about him and until his later years when he married and started a family. Yeah, so you were the eighth child of 10, born in what, 1952? Yes, right. So what, yeah, I'm sure you have good memories, bad memories. Uh, what was it like uh, as the eighth child of uh, 10? Well, uh, we were a very tight knit family, as you might expect in a Italian family of 13, 10 children. And it was a, you know, the bedrooms, there were only four or five bedrooms and I shared my bedroom with three brothers. So we had a lot of opportunity to spend time and bond together and, uh, but it was it was a fun, enjoyable time because we we did stay together, and it was just uh, your typical Italian family who 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 uh, enjoyed meals together and had fun together. So you and your dad have a, a special relationship, I'd say, and, and uh, how, how did that get developed? You know, when I was very young, he would take me with him to his four family flat that we rented and he would collect the rent. He would do uh, chores, maintenance, things like that. And I'd go along with him. And then later when he started parking cars uh, on Grand Avenue for the Cardinal ball games, I went with him there. And then later when he purchased a restaurant, he had me going along with him to the restaurant on the weekends. So I was with him as much as possible. And we just developed a strong bond over time being being with him. I was like his shadow. And uh, that's pretty much how that all occurred. So you think it was take one of these kids out of the house or, or he had... Uh... Or he just chose you or you chose him? Well, I think that uh, I was the the youngest son that he could uh, take along with him. The other ones had gotten older. And I love to tag along because I love being with him. And he knew that. So he was OK with me uh, tagging along. And that's he. He, I think he was fond of me because he thought I was a big guy and he liked big things and he was attracted to big things and he was proud of me. Yeah, it seems like in, in your story, he relies on you quite a bit, but you also kind of rely on him. He gives you a certain amount of freedoms that maybe uh, would seem unusual today. So want to explore that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, he was dependent upon me in the sense that I would help him out at the restaurant and fulfill some of those needs. And at the same time, I was dependent upon him because he gave me what I needed, which was the, the father that I wanted to be close to and to get approval from him for what I did. So you write a, a lot about what's going on in baseball during the, these times in your life and certain events, kind of like how everybody remembers where you're, where they were at, where Kennedy was born, when the space shuttle uh, exploded. So what is the connection with you and baseball? Well, what I, I found is that baseball seems to have been very prevalent in my life during the early days. I think it started with parking cars for the ball games and then later at the restaurant when we were three blocks from 
the uh, old Sportsman's Park Stadium. Um, it's just surrounded me and uh, I, I became very interested in the sport. And uh, there were some tragic coincidences that happened in baseball that kind of tied me even further to it, which uh, was kind of a strange thing. Uh, my mother and grandmother both died while I was attending Cardinal ball games. And um, it was just a kind of a strange coincidence, but baseball has just always kind of been prevalent in my life. And the other thing is baseball is considered the great American pastime. You know, you live a lot of memories of the things you go through with the teams. And I feel like my book was, as I named it, an unforgettable pastime because I went through my life memories during those days that were unforgettable to me. And I kind of compared the two as be, both being uh, pastimes. So your book, do you feel like it's a success story or just a memoir or is it uplifting story? How, how, what do you, how do you feel about your book now? I feel like the book, other than being um, a release for me, as far as all the things I felt during those days growing up in my family during the 60s and all the things that uh, my parents had to face in helping us. It, it's a story of success, a successful family and the parents showing by example what can be done in your life to make uh, yourself strong, worthwhile and valuable to society. Uh, through through their examples. So in a way, I think it was a success story that my parents built through their children. All right. Well, that sounds that sounds really interesting. And and uh, I think it I think it's also a testament to um, all immigrants, not just Italian immigrants, what they go through. And uh, I think it's still applicable today um, about the struggles that many immigrants face. So um, I think your book's going to be available on the Hill at the Welcome Center on Saturdays from 10 to 3. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. And, 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 you're, and you're trying to get it in other stores on the Hill as well? Yes. And of course, it's available on Amazon. On Amazon? Okay. So we just look up Michael Anthony Vitale on Amazon. An Unforgettable Pastime. Again, here's a, a copy of the front of the book. Might be backwards because of the camera here, but here's your your cover. Well, anything else you'd like to add before we end the podcast today? Um, no, I just hope that uh, people will take the opportunity to maybe just, if nothing else, take a look at the book on the website, read read the cover, see see what it's about. You know, read the sample pages that they offer to see if it's something you might be interested in. I think it's a great story about family growing up and the bond and love they have for each other and how it helps them all by creating and building this bond through through the years. And what's your website? Um, Michael A. Vitale. Um, I'm sorry, it's uh, michaelvitale.com. michaelvitale.com. And I guess you're on Facebook as well. So it's available on the, at the Hill Welcome Center in St. Louis, Missouri on Saturdays from 10 to 3 and uh, probably available in other stores coming soon as well. All right, Michael. Well, thanks very much for joining us today and uh, right. good luck with your book. Thank you. Bye.